Hi, I'm David Heboy, architect, City Hollister architect, and we're here at uh, 1141 Little River Drive in San Benito County. And behind me is what we call, is called, actually came up the name from my client, Dr. Steve Jove, is the Jovian Poolinet. It's a 6,000 real, approximately 6,000 square foot outdoor pool enclosure. It's pre-engineered aluminum frame. It's got a translucent uh, roof panel called Kel Wall, which is made out of prismatic polyester fibers. And the framing there is what we call the barrier wall. It's going to act to minimize uh, cooling and, and uh, ventilation requirements for the pool itself as separate from the non-pool area. The non-pool area will feature a stage. In this corner there will be a recording room for musicians or people in the entertainment field. And then there will be a stage with a podium and the podium will be able to control visual displays and the LED uh, light system that'll be within the confines of this enclosure. Above you see the cutout areas that are square. Those are for the V-Lux solar powered skylights. The very top, the apex of the four-sided pyramid structure, you'll see a circle that is cut out for what we call an apex fan. It will help to draw the humid air out of the pool area and into the atmosphere. We were talking about it, remember? It started out as a geodesic dome, right? Oh, that's right. We were talking about doing it as a geodesic dome. Right. But that uh, wasn't going to be, like, big enough. Right? So then we decided on a pyramid. Four-sided pyramid. Yeah. Well, that's the only kind of pyramid there is, I think. And then the name Jovian Pulamid, how did that come about? Well, Pulamid is because it's a pool and a pyramid. And the stage will be what? I think maybe a foot or foot and a half above the level of this thing. Mm -hmm. Can you briefly describe the, the lighting design that you're... I was going to have indirect uh, LED lighting around the, the perimeter inside. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I need spotlights and stuff in there, but I have to figure that out as things progress. And also, Gonna make a uh, subterranean water storage uh, unit to catch mm -hmm. all the rainwater from this and everything else. Yeah. On the permitting of, of, of the in the process that we went through with uh, it, it was three years. California mm -hmm. Electrical uh, Commission database, the Title 24 requirements. The, the uh, and then we were going to go into. You know, I want an air conditioner in that half of it. We can't do anything here. This is ventilated 24-7. But I want an air conditioner over there because I thought it might get hot in the summer. But even a standalone air conditioner with its own power, they wouldn't allow that. Yeah, that, there's a heat, heat pump, pump over there. That I, I contacted the a ducting guy. He's going to call me back. Uh -huh. But the, uh, Otherwise, the, the, the heat, the, the heat pump the that heats the pool... When it heats, it evacuates cold air. And the air, I want to duct it over into there to act like a, kind of like an air conditioner. But you have very little control of it because it only is operable when the pool is heating. So uh, I taught control systems and, and uh, linear MOSFET uh, IC circuit design at San Jose State. Oh, OK. But I've been an analog circuit designer my whole career at IBM. Wow. 27 years. How many patents do you have? A couple dozen. It's for layman's terms, basically amplification, as we were talking earlier. And uh, linear and nonlinear signal processing, but it's all analog. Uh -huh. and, and then this pedestrian walkway, this breezeway, was also a requirement. Is uh, If uh, there was any building, outbuilding, I think it was over a thousand square feet, it had to be connected to the house with a breezeway. And since that's 6,000 square feet. Yeah. But then the plus of this, the plus of leaving a, a slight gap between the edge of the roof panel for the pedestrian uh, canopy and the house is that it allowed a differential of, of movement because this pre-engineered aluminum frame will move at a, a different uh, frequency than the house will 
during the earthquake. Um, I and I first, uh, my first sketches were pretty, <laughs> pretty out there, you know, just in terms of conceptual sketches. Yeah. But then I've had to help him through the whole process, get all his approvals, and he is his own acting general contractor. Hmm. Anyhow, this this is uh, Dr. Steve Jones' garage slash laboratory. And there's a couple of this, this nice car. It's got a Lamborghini. And that's the, uh, you have a Tesla over there, Tesla convertible. Yes. How many Teslas do you have, Steve? I've got three. He's got this thing, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. What it's is a, that? Uh, connects to the computer, and it's a it's a tube um, transfer characteristic plotter. So you put the tubes in here; it plots the characteristics on the screen, and you can make uh, you know a copy of it. Mm -hmm. So since I'm designing some tube amplifiers, then you can use that information. Cool. It's oh, an AM wow. radio. Look at that. Jeez. I refinished the cabinet. It has an electromagnetic speaker that's in like, perfect condition. It's before they knew how to super heterodyne, so there's multiple RF stages and uh, four AGCs. There's no automatic gain control. You know, it's just real primitive. And it's, it's all triodes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, I was going to put one of these sinks in the, in the pool in there, too. So now there's cold water. Oh, wow. And here's hot water. And then there's both. <sighs> what about the happy eye tube? Did you want to talk about that? Oh, the magic eye tube? The magic eye tube. And these are 6E5s. This is new old stock. So this is a, a, a new tube that was probably made in 1945 or something. Hmm. And that's, that's it. So it's green and it opens up to nice. whatever you want. Yeah. I think there, there's a website. You can go to the website and look up uh, 6E5 Magic Eye Tube VU Meter and you can see uh, some circuitry that people have come up with and so that's going to be on the front of each one of these amplifiers under Burr. Yeah, nice. this is a podium and it has a, a, a self-contained PA system and these lights, this, is, this fell off, but there's colored LEDs that, uh, that are responsive to this, this little thing here. Yeah, this is the controller. Oh, sir. This is the controller for the lights. And this is the uh, color monitor. So whatever colors those are, this duplicates it, and you can see it back here. So you know you don't have mm -hmm. to look over there and, yep. and do that. And this will be on the kind of the on the stage on the stage yeah, over towards the left when you're looking at the stage. So, so there's a monitor here, and there's going to be some AV equipment, but most of it's going to be in that recording room. Mm -hmm. And that's a uh, three-way speaker system that has a crossover that I designed, and, and it goes to a little amplifier here, and uh, you know, so you can have a microphone, and it's kind of like a standalone thing. When you have your own personal microphone with the podium, let me guess, you'll be saying to your guests, "Welcome to the Jovian Pullman." I'll just say, uh, my fellow Earthlings. Yeah. My fellow Earthlings. Okay. Well, that that's is something it. that we all have in common, that's for sure. Yeah, Earth. Yes. It's our only home. Yes. 